Hi everyone, hope you're all doing okay. I'm Ash, aka Bromma18, and welcome along to another tactics video here on the channel. This is the series where I show you how to recreate and adapt real systems so that they will work in FIFA 22. It's never a guarantee that you'll win every game, but it is a guarantee that these will be recreated as lifelike and as similarly as possible to their real life counterparts. So, first things first, before we do anything, here's a word from the sponsor of today's video. For the foreseeable future, I'm partnering with Aniba. Aniba.com is a new online gaming marketplace which offers over 20,000 digital products such as video games and DLC codes, with the library of products expanding all the time. Aniba looks to provide you the best deals on the market for all of its products, whether they're new or old, and with an excellent trust pilot score, you can rest assured that your service is safe and secure. Aniba also offers a 24-7 live support service, should you have any concerns or issues with your purchase. Use the code BRUMMER18 at checkout to get 3% off of all of your purchases. And a massive thank you to Aniba for supporting the channel. And with that being said, it is time to get into the tactics. So today, we are covering Maurizio Pochettino's PSG system, in particular the 4 3 3 system. Now, they have sort of varied to a 4 2 3 1, in particular, where Messi really plays more of a central role, full stop. Um, in this case, though, um, as of the start of the season, it's not really worked out as well when they've played that system. They've um, been found wanting a little bit, whereas the 4 3 3 they've had a little bit more success, at least as of the time of recording this. So that's the one that we're really going to cover today. So I've had a lot of enjoyment really playing with this tactic. I think out of all the ones we've covered so far, this has been really, really fun to play with. Um, so very much looking forward to seeing what you guys think as well. Very much about um, you know constant pressure, taking the philosophy that he, he really had at Tottenham, and we'll talk about that more um, in depth shortly. But what we do here is first off, if you're new to the channel, um, I will show you any position changes, um, of which there's two, um, and then we'll talk about the tactics, and I'll tell you not what they do, not also what they do, but also why they do it, to give you a little bit of context, because that is important, and then we'll finish off with the player instructions, and I'll tell you um, what each player's instruction is, and talk about it a little bit as well. So, first things first, the formation itself. So, we've gone for this 4-3-3 holding, you've got the defensive midfielder and the two flat central midfielders. The only changes here is that the two fullbacks have been changed to wing back to get them further forward, make them more advanced. Really does help replicating that role. Um, and we, in particular, you're going to have the two wingers cutting inside a bit more. So um, you'll want the uh, the fullback to, in this case, Hakimi and Mendes. Um, to be overlapping as often as possible and getting as wide as possible and they're creating a lot of the width. In this case, we also have a flat central midfield three, obviously apart from the, the holding midfielder, but the two central midfielders ahead of him are flat. Sometimes what we do in these videos is we move one of them to attack midfield, but in this case, you don't need to because what we're really looking to do is we're getting these guys um, being those sort of deeper line playmakers, generally the likes of Paredes and Verratti, um, and also trying to replicate the fact that they are filling in um, and really protecting the front three who are not going to track us back as much generally. So these guys have got a lot of work to do um, and they have got to fill that out effectively. So to have them as a flat centre midfield three is more um, effective and also lifelike. So moving on to the tactics then. Um, starting off defensively, We've alluded to it already, constant pressure, extreme pressing. It is that Pochettino way, very much in the mould of that Bielsa coaching tree. He was, of course, coached by Bielsa before, um, and you see that sort of in place here. Now, sometimes what they'll do, in particular against Man City in the group stage of the Champions League, is once they get ahead, they may then change to a press after possession loss and become more counter-pressing, um, and then sort of bed back into a mid-block. But generally what you're going to find, in particular in the league as well, where they're constantly playing teams who they are expected to beat, um, it's constant pressure and it's a really extreme press. With the width, this is down to 10. Get them narrow, get them compact, stop teams playing through you, force them to play around. That's what we did. Um, and it works out very, very effectively as well. You want to try and limit as much space in, in as possible, really. And it's a principle that's really carried over throughout the majority of teams. You know, rarely will you see teams leaving so much space in the middle of, of, of their sides. With depth, this is up to 90 to so support that counter pressing tactic. Bear in mind, you've also got a few fast defenders as well Marquinhos 81 pace, Kimpembe 81 pace. 
Um, so, you know, that does complement it as well. So bear that in mind um, when you are trying to sign players as well. Also, when you play Ramos, a little bit slower on this FIFA, only down to 70 pace now. Still not bad for a centre-back, you know, um, but a little bit slower. you got the likes of Diallo, 74 as well. Um, so just bear that one in mind. Moving on to offensive now. We've got slow build-up. Very much looking to play out through the thirds and out from the back. Um, and the fact that you've got those sort of deep line playmakers like Verratti and Paredes um, does also support that as well. We'll come on to their instructions very, very shortly. And then with chance creation, it's actually on possession. Very much seeing players coming closer to the ball. I think it's been more a case of since Messi has arrived... Um, You've seen them go a bit more possession orientated compared to um, before he was there. Very much about a lot of movement, a lot of high energy movement. This time you find him, because you find him come deeper, come and pick the ball up, come into central areas. Uh, then you're going to find that, um, you know, they're very much more possession orientated. The runs are really recreated by the instructions that I will talk to you about very, very shortly. With width, this is down to 20 to supplement that sort of possession based system, get everyone crowding out. The width is going to be created by the wing backs, and that is one of the reasons why we have changed them to wing backs as well, um, because you're going to get them on the pretty much on the touchline on either side, and that's how you're going to create the width in your side. Um, and then otherwise, the width to 20 is also going to complement Messi's instructions as well. When we get him cut him inside which will of course come to very very shortly with the players in the box this is up to six and then that means that you'll get roughly three players in the box so very much you're going to get the likes of Mbappe, Neymar coming into the box then you might get a central midfielder as well Messi is very much a bit more versatile he'll sometimes come outside the box because that's where he does his his best work really getting the ball recycling possession being that pivot as well and then he picks it up from there often scoring scoring from outside the box really so worth bearing that one in mind as well with the corners and free kicks, we're trying to personalise them more this season, but generally it is the same principles for a lot of teams. So corners and free kicks up to four. You get two men back, you get one outside the area as well, um, and then the rest of the players will go into the box. Bear in mind that you'll see in the second half of this game, we're trying to play short a little bit more, and it was often Messi who was coming short, picking up the ball. We were cutting inside of him, and he was coming close to scoring two, three, four times. So bear that one in mind as well. That is a very good option for you to do. Now then, we can and move on to the player instructions what we do here is we start off with a keeper and we'll work our way through the field so first things first with Donald Roma we've got him on comes to crosses and sweep a keeper as well with you playing such a high line you are going to have to try and complement that by using sweeper keeper he'll come out a little bit more didn't really get tested in the gameplay above me, unfortunately, um, but generally it will when you're playing against sort of um, different opposition who are going to try and utilise that. Worth bearing in mind that when we were playing against Marseille, it was Arcadius Milik up front, who obviously isn't going to try and penetrate the opposition. He's going to try and hold at the ball and back into the opposition centre-backs. So worth bearing that one in mind. Comes across crosses as well to try and relieve the pressure off you, really. AI crossing it a little bit more in this FIFA, as you'll see. So uh, the goalkeeper can help you out a little bit there. The two centre-backs, you do not need to change anything here. Keep them absolutely normal. If you want to try and recreate the role as lifelike as possible, when you play Ramos, you can change it to aggressive interceptions. We've seen how he likes to step out a little bit more, really put himself and impose himself on opposition attackers. So that's fine if you'd like to do that. Um, but bear in mind, you are playing a very high line as well. Um, so you will leave yourself a little bit more vulnerable. But it is a good way of recreating that um, as realistically as possible. On to the wing-backs next. Both of these are on the same. We've got Mendes and Hakimi, who are, I have to say, very, very good um, recreating this. They were so energetic, so pacey, really, really good. Played a big, important part, as they do. Both of these are on join the attack and overlap. Again, playing into what we've already spoken about, so I don't need to speak about it too much. Um, with them getting onto the, the touchline, creating the most width, the most width excuse me. And then that allows the likes of Messi and Neymar to cut inside as well, when it really creates that overload in the central areas. Again, playing into that possession-based system. We'll talk about them very, very shortly. Next, on to the central midfielders. First off, with the defensive midfielder, Verratti in this case. Bear in mind, he's the deep line playmaker. He's actually the deepest. You would think it's Idris guy because of the fact that he's obviously that ball-winning midfielder. But he's actually given license to get forward a bit more, to impose himself on the opposition as well. He also helps count, use that counter press um, and just the, the pressing in general. So you want him a bit further forward to instigate that and to play into that. Whereas Verratti is given that free roll and is a little bit protected as well. So as the deep line playmaker, he's on cut passing lanes. Manmar doesn't really work, but they're very 
more zonally orientated anyway. That's something that I guess perhaps hasn't uh, trickled down to Pochettino from that, um, you know, sort of Bielsa tree mould. Um, you're really looking at someone a little bit more, more zonally orientated. With attacking support, make sure that he's staying back while attacking. Um, defensive position is cover centre as well, and all three of them are going to be the same. The reason being is that you don't want these getting dragged out automatically. If say you've committed down the wing and then the opposition are looking to counter you on the wing you want to manually be bringing a player out paredes guy um you don't want them to be dragged out automatically because what i've noticed on this fifa in particular is that a lot of players um or the ai in particular will really try and exploit those central areas and there's a lot of space that gets vacated um and sort of opens up for the opposition and that's how they score a lot of goals so you want to try and crowd out that area as much as possible um, and finally we positioning freedom on free row and make sure again training into that whole playmaker regista type role really showing for the ball as much as possible get a lot of movement we really played through him a lot um, as you'll notice on the gameplay, if you have been sort of glancing at it every so often, um, you know, we were trying to play through him a lot. A lot of our, I guess, initial attacks were starting off and going through him. Um, so sort of that hidden role. Now, with the two central midfielders, we've got a couple of different roles. First off, with Paredes, again, who's another real deep line playmaker, but re really doing his work a little bit further up the field. He's an, you're, Really, he's allowing you to recycle possession when say you put the ball into the box and then it comes out perhaps they head it away clear it etc he'll pick it up in those slightly higher positions but he's still generally that sort of deep line playmaker again filling in for those front three as well so stay up while attacking and stay on the edge of the box with the cross as well um Defensive position, cover centre, we've already spoken about it, but positioning freedom, he's also on free roam. But what's important is that he won't necessarily be doing it in the central areas. He'll also be coming out to the wide areas as well. Bear in mind, he's actually a right central midfielder, and Idrissa Gay is a left central midfielder as well. Forgot to mention that, I do apologise if you are making the tactic along the way. Um, so you want him on free roam, and what it will also do, as I mentioned here, is it will also bring him out wide, and that's very important because... Also, you've got Messi cutting inside. You've got Akimi who will have overlapped. He'll offer that protection for Akimi, and also just another option, a bit of movement. You know, does the opposition hold in midfield as if there are two, for instance, follow Paredes um, or stick to their zonal area? It creates that mismatch option. Again, plays into that whole playmaker role as well. And with Adrissa Guy, on the other hand, you still got stay back while attacking, but then you've got get into the box of crosses. Now, you may think those two conflict, but actually it doesn't. What happens is when they get the ball in the wide areas in a crossing situation say in the attacking third then he'll get into the box a lot and you'll see Adrissa guy do it for example against Man City he did score um, coming from that sort of situation however when it's sort of centrally or you're counter-attacking or uh, you've got the ball in the sort of middle third you're not going to find him storming in um, running in beyond the striker etc that's not his game that's not what he'll do um, so very much he's still looking to offer that protective role but in a crossing situation he may get into the box a little bit more um, with positioning freedom this time stick to position um, you don't really want him free roaming because that's not his, his really his role he's very much that sort of aggressor so you want him in the central areas often um, and then you can poach players and, and poach the ball from there and obviously cover center as well as we've already spoken about so then let's get on to the really exciting part the front three all of these guys have slightly different roles um, so first things first let's start with let's start with Neymar so defensive support this is on basic so sometimes he'll trap back sometimes he won't very much playing into the fact that you've got these three central midfielders, as I keep talking about. You're, this enables you to not be as persistent with the, the wingers and the striker tracking back as well. Very much what you find with Neymar is that he's not always tracking back. Sometimes all three of them will stay forward, but often two of them will, and it will usually be Neymar and Messi, and Mbappe will trap back. We'll talk about that very, very shortly. With chance creation, he's on cutting side. Get him into the central areas as often as possible. But it's not just that. Because he's on balance support with the runs, it means that sometimes he'll run in behind, and in which case he'll angle his runs. We do, of course, score a goal from that, as you'll see from the gameplay. Um, but then sometimes he'll come short. Either way, he's cutting inside, you're getting him onto the ball as much as possible, and he can really um, utilise his variety of strengths because he's got pace, he's got good movement, he's got energy, but also, when you get him onto the ball, very skillful, very, very technically gifted. Um, so you get, you, you're get you able to utilise him in the multitude of different ways. 
and finally we support on crosses getting to the box for the cross as well now onto the other side of the pitch and it is the big man himself um, really <laughs> just so fun playing with him isn't it just really really fun just this tactic in general when this team um, these players the front three so fun to use it has to be said really really enjoyed it so with Messi he's on stay forward now occasionally he'll trap back but really what you find is that um, generally you just don't want him utilising his energy and utilising his stamina up too much. It's also worth bearing in mind that his stamina is only 72 on this game. So if you've got him on comeback on defence, he's going to be very, very tired. And that's not what you want. You want him to get the best out of him. So that's why, again, um, you know, we've got him on stay forward. With chance creation, he's on free roam. And then, that, we've spoken about it, sort of alluded to it. Um, very much coming into the central areas, picking up lots of positions, finding lots of space. You can just get the ball to him and then he works from there. Whether or not he's running in behind, which is rare, um, or coming short, picking up the ball, you just try and get him on the ball as much as possible. That really recreates that well. It also, worth bearing in mind, provides a lot of space for someone like Hakimi, um, who you'll see, he does actually win the penalty, because again, driving forward gets lots of space created for him. So he also provides that option as well. And then support on crosses, on balance. You remember we spoke about in the tactics earlier, how sometimes he might be sort of coming out on the edge of the area more, playing that pivot role. So really on balance, occasionally you can get him into the box, in which case, you know, when you get cutbacks, etc. from the likes of Neymar, he will be there to receive. Finally, with Kylian Mbappe. With support runs, he's on drift wide. How often do we see, particularly when they're countering on teams, how we're coming to those wide areas where there's a lot more space because the fullbacks have committed um, and then utilising his pace of running behind, as we've got here, getting behind as well. Just utilising that, that fantastic physical traits that he has. Um, very much about... Um, rotating as well so for example when Messi comes centrally you got Mbappe coming wide what on earth do the opposition do in that case you know do they go man to man do they track do they stick to their zonal areas in which case they might be leaving space for the likes of Mbappe and Messi it's just a complete nightmare isn't it for opposition defences and finally with defensive support he's on comeback on defence you generally see him tracking back a lot more um, and don't be scared to do this either because of the fact if you look at his stamina he has 88 stamina very just so much energy again so much energy so that's what allows you to keep Messi and Neymar forward a bit more because Mbappe you'll often find tracks back a little bit more and they can do that um, but just bear in mind he'd also um, when he is tracking back sometimes, he then has to get run forward and utilise a counter-attack. So worth bearing that one in mind as well. You'll just have to hold up the ball a little bit in certain instances. So then, that just about rounds it off for the video today then guys. If you have enjoyed it, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so that you get notifications every time I upload the video. Don't forget to check out my Borussia Dortmund career mode series, a realistic rebuild, currently ongoing. Really enjoying that, so check that one out. If you've got any questions about the tactics, please do let me know in the comment section and I'll do my best to get back to you. Don't forget to check out any of the links on in the description such as following me on Twitter, the link there is in the description, and also links to Aniba, use the code BROMA18 to get a 3% discount, thank you to them for sponsoring the channel, and also affiliate links to all of my equipment, my gear, microphone, uh, consoles, PC parts, all that good stuff, um, I get a kickback, and uh, it does help to support the channel. Make sure to check out any of my other tactics videos as well. We've got, well, we will have absolutely loads. We've got a few at the moment, and by the time you're watching this, we may have even more. So check all them out as well. And on that note, we are going to finish the video there. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, I will see you soon. Tonight.